Hello everyone, welcome back. Uh, I have picked up an e-reader for the Game Boy Advance and I'm going to be using it on my GameCube. So, um, sit back and enjoy. I'm going to mess around with some, uh, some cards that I had in my Nintendo Power and uh, some that I purchased uh, from online. Let's see and have a little fun. Scan.code Okay, first off, I'm going to start with some of the Pokemon cards that came in my Nintendo Power collection, and um, these these have been uh, in my daughter's collection. I kind of gave her a while back, and then discovered, oh hey, these got those little uh, barcodes to scan in the e-readers. And since I purchased an e-reader now, I figured we'd see what's on them, and, and uh, you know, maybe uh, maybe maybe something interesting, maybe not. It was kind of a gimmicky thing, so let's see what we get. Well, it seems for starters, these aren't too fancy, these ones. Uh, this, this couple I just scanned only seems to have uh, data that would be in the Pokédex, maybe, so not too exciting, but, you know, hey, what do you expect for nothing? It's free, and it was kind of interesting just to see them, that they have some uh, some specifications for the uh, the Pokémons here. So this card's a little different. We picked up this drowsy from a local card shop where my daughter likes to go and uh, just look through them because they sell them for uh, 10 for a dollar. And she noticed that one of them had the barcodes on it, or the dot codes as they're called. And she thought it'd be fun to bring home and see. And it turned out that, you know, it was really cool because this is part of a mini game collection, but obviously we don't have the other six, so they're gonna be hard to track down. I don't know if we ever will. But it was interesting to find out that they actually contain mini games if you scan enough of them. So, uh, as you'll see soon, I'm gonna go digging through my Nintendo Powers and find out if some are complete collections that actually have a mini game included. Scan.code. Okay, so I decided to look through my Nintendo Powers because I discovered that, you know, they, they put a lot of these cards in just different versions of the Nintendo Powers, and uh, I found these two, and these two actually create a mini game. So not only do you get the, uh, the specs as they are for, like, the Pokédex, but when you scan both of them together, it gives you a little mini game. Now, when you see it, you'll see this mini game's really basic, but it's kind of fun, and if you were a kid and you had the e-reader, this would have been great for free. I mean, it's not very challenging. Seeing how good this was with just two cards, I imagine the one that scanned seven cards was going to be an even better game, so I'd be very curious to know if anyone out there has all seven of those cards and what kind of uh, game it creates, because uh, it should be pretty fun considering the amount of cards it was going to take. But this one again, for only being two cards, you know, nice little nice little mini game and uh, very enjoyable as, uh, as it stands. Scanning of dot codes complete. Start application. Scan.code. Lo start application saved on e-reader. Load application from Game Boy Advance or Nintendo GameCube. 
All right, let's get down to the real meat and potatoes of this thing. Uh, fortunately, when I bought this, I got a really good deal, and it contained all 13 sets of the classic NES games for the e-reader. And uh, when it originally came, it was already preloaded with uh, Ice Climber. And I just figured I'd give it a shot, so I, I just plugged it in, and obviously I just tested out the uh, the game that was preloaded. Clearly, this thing has some internal memory where it stores this stuff. And uh, Ice Climber was the last one scanned in, so I figured I'd just give it a shot, and here's Ice Climber. Well, the only downside is I was having a little difficulty. You can see the screen's a little jumpy, but I just think it's because of the resolution that it's trying to support and running through the emulator on the GameCube for the Game Boy Advance. And I was just tweaking around with the settings, but it didn't really seem to matter. It kind of got jumpy, and I mean, that's just obviously the nature of it. I don't think it has anything to do with the cards themselves. I bet if I had purchased the uh, Game Boy Advance cartridges that they put out with the Classic Edition, it would have been the same results. Uh, but, you know, it didn't really take away from the gameplay. Everything played perfectly fine, and, uh, you know, it was still a blast. Other than it being a little jumpy, I had no complaints. So here's where I actually test out the, the, the barcode reader, uh, or the dot code reader, I keep calling it barcode, but they, they call them dot codes. And uh, I decided to try Urban Champion first, and as you'll see here, I sped this up so because it takes a while. I mean, that's the only uh, downside, but it's still amazing that it works. You have to scan several cards. So in this one, I had to scan nine different cards. Uh, actually, I think there's five cards, and then there's dot codes on uh, different sides of it, and I'll, I'll show you that in a little bit, but complete. after you scan them in, it asks you if Is you want okay to change to the data, the overwrite the application that's already on there. Obviously, you want to because you want to play the new game, and I just said yes and loaded it in, and I just took a, a few good swings playing Urban Champion. Have a, have a little look-see and enjoy. Okay, so how does this all work? Well, it's really cool. As you see on these cards, uh, the e-reader cards, you get several in a pack, and as you get really close, you zoom in further and further and further, you see there's all these little dots, which represents the bits. Obviously, the black ones are ones, and the white space is a zero. Now, as anyone that knows binary code, that's what you do. You, you put in code so the computer can read. It's like on and off switches. And you get enough of those dots that match up with the program, and you can scan them in little bits at a time and store them on the memory on this e-reader card which then acts just like a real cartridge with the program on it and you're able to play Nintendo games just by scanning in many of these cards. It's just, it's really cool, it's fantastic. It's something that I guess Olympus created, the same as the camera company. So it's, it's, a, it's a dot code format. They must have uh, licensed it to Nintendo and I'm sure it's been patented. And it reminds me a lot of like those old stories from Microsoft where they had to load programs on tape and like run it out for the Altair and, and, and load it onto that. And it was just, you know, punched holes instead of, uh, instead of having black, you know, dots on there. But it's very similar and it's just really neat to see it come back even though it's probably not very useful today. Uh, it's just fascinating to see like the old school technologies used again uh, and for entertainment purposes. 
And evidently there's ways that you can print your own dot codes, which I'd imagine if you were able to take the binary code of any game, you could create your own dot codes, but it's really tricky. You gotta have a certain program. You gotta print it on photo quality paper. You gotta have a printer that's high enough resolution to do that. So I don't know, is it really worth it with emulation the way it is today? I don't think so. I don't even think it'd be worth it to try and just print off these these cards. You know, I I think it'd be worth, you know, other than just doing it to do it, I think you'd be better off just buying the cards uh, and, and not dealing with all the hassle. But again, a lot of people do these things just to say they can do them. And while I applaud them and it's really neat, it seems like a huge waste of time. So I'm just gonna stick with, you know, whatever is actually printed out there and just have fun. So as you can see, I've scanned several of the games and they all work great. I, you know, didn't show all of them here because there's 13 of them. There's a lot. And uh, other than the novelty of it, you know, the, does it get tiresome? Um, not really. It's it's just kind of cool. You know, the setup's a, a bit of a drag and, you know, you've got to have the exact right timing to slide them or you get errors with the reading, but you get used to it. And then, you know, next thing you know, you're doing it perfectly. Um, but coming up, I've got in a few seconds, I got a couple more games uh, that came out of my Nintendo Powers. Uh, well, actually, one's a game. And one was something where I guess it was very popular. I mean, I I really loved Animal Crossing, but I didn't realize how popular uh, the cards were back then for some people. I mean, now you've got all the uh, RF chips in the Animal Crossing games, and, and we've collected a bunch of those. But uh, I, I really am sad that I missed out on the collection uh, for for Animal Crossing cards way back. Um, but I, I can't really show how to do it in this because it just scans. Uh, I'll put up another video of how to scan one into Animal Crossing because it's actually uh, a link pattern that you go to the Able Sisters and you scan it in. So this is just gonna show you the pattern. Uh, but after that, there's a, a, a fun little game that was thrown in there with the, uh, the introduction of the Kirby cartoon. And uh, that'll be coming up in just a second. So the last thing I have to show was more of a promo tool. I mean, they put one of these cards into Nintendo Power when they were about to premiere the Fox Kids Network show, Kirby. And they put this card in, and anyone that had an e-reader, if there was an installed base of a lot of users, which I don't think there ever were, they would have been able to scan this in and actually play this little mini game. Uh, for Kirby before the, the show came out. And I think it was a brilliant tool. Uh, obviously, you know, it was just one of those things that was mismanaged. They didn't quite figure out the niche. Uh, I think these were really popular in Japan, but it just never took off in America. And it's really unfortunate because it was a really neat and novel idea. And I mean, there were so many applications that you could use for tie-ins to games or promotions. Uh, the things with being able to see the specs on your Pokemon cards, being able to throw a game that ties into a TV show, being able to purchase cards that would actually tie into a complete video game that you have. So would I recommend this for anybody? I don't know if I would. I mean, I just like the idea of it. You know, I have kind of have a fascination with just different technologies and how they work and, and things that are very novel. But in the end, if it's something that really fascinates you or you think is cool, I think you'll enjoy it too. But if not, I hope you just enjoy this video. There's other videos out there to watch too if you want to get right into it without going out and purchasing it. So hopefully you can enjoy mine, enjoy others, and just sit back and, and relive the the fun of the e-reader Well, again, that's all I have for now. I hope you enjoyed the video. 
So long.